Hello everyone and welcome to my Halloween special doll repaint video. And today it's not just my personal own doll repaint, but we together with lots of other artists have made lots of spooky dolls for you to give you creebles this Halloween. And I'm really proud to be a part of this huge collaboration because normally collaboration is about like five, four, eight, maybe ten artists. But today you can see the Halloween special creations of probably all doll artists on YouTube, at least of everyone who had time and wished to make something special for Halloween. Of course I will not present now all of the artists, I will do it a little bit later when I will be busy with uh, repainting and yeah, working on my doll, then we will have time to show all of them. But already now I can tell you that today you will probably be able to discover lots of new names in the doll artist world here on YouTube. And I'm really a little bit jealous because for me it was really interesting to see them all in the first time. And by the way, some of these dolls can become really good ideas for your own Halloween makeovers this year. You can easily recreate some makeups or some outfits of the dolls that we have made today. Of course, let's go back to my repaint. Uh, this year I've decided to make a voodoo doll. I think it's a cool concept, I don't know, I got suddenly inspired, I thought I had some texture for her face, eyes, so I've decided to go away from painting ideal blushed shadowed eyes and to make something completely different. Because yeah, Halloween is just once per year, and just once per year I have a chance to make something completely different and to be happy about it and to not think is it not too much. On Halloween nothing is too much, so I can let myself go. So let's take all our spooky stuff and let's start working. Let's go! For my repaint I will take this Monster High doll from Created Doll Collection. You know this one you need to assemble yourself. First of all her body has already the needed texture because it's a mommy doll originally. And another plus point is that she has no root holes in her head. And I kind of don't need hair or holes this time. And as a bonus her head is very easy to take off. You don't need no hair dryer or hot water for this. You see you can easily make all the body parts loose. and and then put them back together. And then I remove her old face with pure acetone and it sounds by the way very Halloween style. Like come here I'm gonna to remove your face with acetone. Fits, it kind of fits the repaint. Then I take a regular paper towel, like Scotex we call it here, and I split it into single layer sheets. You see it has three layers and the printed one I will not use, and the white ones I tear into long stripes. Or you can also use tissues for example, or toilet paper. And now I want to glue these tissue stripes to the doll's face. And for the first layer I will use the bison glue, later for the next coats I will use tacky glue, but I'm not really sure if it can glue paper to this rubber face very good. So I will first make the first coat using a strong and smelly bison glue. I let it dry overnight and 
and then I apply this second layer of paper on top using tacky glue, like I said it already. My goal now is to create a very ugly and kind of wrinkly uneven surface that would look like an old rack or some old bandages. I need a very rich texture this time. And while I'm working, I will start presenting all the dolls of our collaboration here in the corner of the screen. Because there are so many spooky dolls gathered together on our group picture, that it took me a while to find my own doll on it. So this time we have 15 artists and 16 unique dolls. Some of the artists are very famous, already, I would say, iconic in the doll art world. And some names you've probably never heard before because it's smaller channels. So let's look at all of them one by one. And tell me later in the comment section which one is your favorite. When the last layer gets dry, I'm going to make a mouth or let's say split on the place of her mouth. And the rest of her hat I cover with another layer of tissue.
Then I apply another layer of paper and this time I cover the mouth with a solid piece of it. And then with a sharp knife I tear this paper to make like tear edges effect. With pieces of fabric hanging around and stuff. Now I think the texture of her face looks scary enough and I can add some color to it. And first I paint the inside of her mouth black. And then I apply a layer of light brown pastels. I work quite hard with the brush because I want to make the edges even more messy and hanging loose and more tiered. Then I go a couple of tones darker. With dark brown pastels, I make all the wrinkles more shadowed. And like this I'm going all the time, darker and darker. Now I want to stitch her mouth and here I'm going to use approximately the same method like I use for a rooting doll hair. First I make holes with a thick needle and then I will stick pieces of thick thread inside and add a couple of drops of tacky glue on top. And my needle broke the next day after doing this by the way, so I probably pushed Max out of it. I'm also making four holes on the place of her eye. Here I'm going to add a cross stitch. First I'm implanting the bottom row, let the glue dry completely and then I repeat exactly the same to the upper row. Thank you. 
and then I'm going to shade the stitches. And by the way, while I'm working with pastels all this time, I'm using Mr. Super Clear Sealant. It's obvious for me to use this spray that I might forget to talk about it in my videos, but I protect each single layer with the sealant. Instead of the second eye, I'm going to attach a black button stitched with red thread. I think I still want to add some colorful accent to her face by painting the sides of this button red. To make her hair, I'm gonna take acrylic yarn of such a dirty grey brownish color or something. I cut a couple of pieces of this thick thread and then I split them into thin threads, make like such a fluffy hair out of it. Like this I'm making a bunch of spooky mini wefts that look like hair from some horror movie to me. And then I'm attaching hair to the top of her head. And to make her beautiful hairstyle even prettier, I'm going to add a lace bow to her head. In a normal life, I would really love the color of the lace, but next to this doll, it all looks like something old and bloody and creepy, I don't know. And since this is a voodoo doll, I'm going to fix the bow with a pin to her head. And another pin is going straight to the middle of her stitched eye. And you know what is the worst part of doll repainting? It's when you have worked already for days. And when you finally feel that the final is here, here it is, it's very close, that it's almost done, then you suddenly realize that here it's still a body to make. You know, it's like doing dishes, there is always a pan left somewhere. So let's do it all again one more time. Thank you. 
Now we can finally put the head and the body back together and it's again super easy with this kind of a doll, no hair dryer, no hot water, nothing, easy. And now let's take a look at her outfit and this time it's kind of collaboration in collaboration because I'm collaborating today again with my mom or you can call my mom also the 16th artist of this collaboration of, for Halloween. So I've asked her to make a black dress, a white apron and white socks and she has also made a mini voodoo doll for her. But of course, right now it all looks so fresh and new, like she had just brought it from a shop. So let's give this clothes some extra horror vibes. And now you're watching a tutorial top 5 creative ways to make your clothes dirty by Popa Natalia. <laughs> And her shoes also shouldn't be that white and shiny, let's make them dirty as well. And this mini voodoo should also fit her owner. And now it's a tutorial how to cover everything in blood and kill nobody. I could find no normal dropper at home to be able to make drops of blood, so I needed to take some funny plastic dropper from my eye drops. You know, I'm normally not really a dark person, I don't watch horror movies, just maybe American Horror Story, but it's rather stylish than scary. But it really gives me satisfaction right now making all these creepy things, spraying blood around. Probably this part of you also needs to come out sometimes. And for the last detail, I will take this pair of hands, I don't really know where they come from, I have lots of stuff like this laying around, hands, hats, looks also very Halloweenish. And then I make bloody handprints on her apron and on the doll. And check out by the way how my desk looks right now. And here is my creepster with her friend. It's probably the scariest doll I've ever made so far, because the last year for Halloween I made a crystal queen and a sugar skull doll, so they were quite colorful and not really creepy, but this year I really let myself go. And you haven't seen the next makeover yet by the way, the one that will come out tomorrow on my channel. My husband said that I needed to put 18 plus restriction there. So what do you think about the dark side of Popa Natalia? Please let me know, because these kind of dolls we haven't discussed in the comments yet, I think. 
and I'm also very curious to know which dolls from these collaborations are your favorites. Which ones are you going to watch or maybe you have come to my channel now after watching another video from this collab. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you're here for the first time. I post new Dory paints every week Friday and even tomorrow we will meet again and I will show you the last doll made especially for Halloween this year. So we will see each other very soon, just in 24 hours. Keep in touch, thank you for being with me, see you very soon, bye!